Hello everybody, it's Michelle Marie. It's a lady. It's been a while since we did a video in the studio. And the reason we're doing it in the studio today is I wanted to talk about portable communications devices and I couldn't use the portable communications devices to do video because obviously they're the items of this video. So I gotta get one more piece. Okay. Now you guys know I've been doing videos outside and you probably have been seeing in camera field my microphone here and that certainly is one of the more most important of the pieces because obviously you gotta be able to hear me and this beat up duster piece of crap whatever you want to call it microphone has been a pretty much a good warhorse it served a lot and it's still working despite the fact it's been dropped kicked thrown whatever name to connect said microphone to the mobile devices, we have two things on one cable here. Microphone uses these XLR plugs. And my iPhone uses this um, 3.5 millimeter plug. Okay, so you might say, oh, that's easy. This is get three pins. This is get four. <laughs> Not so easy. You need a, a preamp. That's what this does. And I mentioned this before. This is called the iRig. And this whole point of this guy is two things. One, it has both the preamp and the microphone to adjust for the fact that the microphone is pretty much a, mag a moving coil type thing. It's a magnetic thing. It also has a switch on it for regular on and off, but it also supports microphones that need phantom power at 48 volts um, DC. That's what that switch is for. That's part of the 48B. So if you ever need 48 volts for condenser mic, this will do it for you. Um, this also has provisions for headphones, so that if you plug in this into your phone, and you're going to plug headphones into this, you're all set. You could technically use this to make and receive phone calls, although I've never actually done it that way. Um, but I suppose you could do it that way. And this connects to this using a standard XLR mail plug. So this is the um, main tool for when you are making videos. Now, that does it for sound. What about video? Well, that's two pieces here. This is my homemade Pancake BX, um table stand. And of course, we have a bracket here which allows my iPhone to be connected up and slides in here, as I'll show you, as I have my phone right here. And you don't have to take it off this rubber case off it either. It just slides in like that. So when you see me on camera, you sometimes see me fussing around with the knob to adjust the camera position to get a good shot. And that's because of this nature. This, by the way, this bracket here was designed for security cameras. Um, you know, CCTV cameras, like the one that we're using to shoot this video with, um, which is normally me mounted on a wall or the ceiling of a building and uh, to watch for thugs. <clears throat> but uh, it just seems to work pretty good for this. And um, so, now, I also have a few other things to sh talk about too um, that is related to all of this. So I'm put all the stuff back in the back here. Oh yes, the most important a way to carry it all. Um, and it's even though it's not really essential, and it was just kind of thrown in here. I have my umbrella because it does rain sometimes. Like it might rain it's in a couple days. It's not going to rain today, thank God. It just happens to be that the Velcro wasn't locked in place. I don't want to have the same flood moving on me. Um, Okay, Delaney, you're probably asking yourself, what bank did you rob? <laughs> I didn't rob any. Although, we will talk about that, too. Um, so, I'll put everything back in here. It's just the right, right size of this bag. And the bag has it's designed for frozen food. So, it's, just, uh, it's insulated. So, that makes it kind of nice because um, it also keeps your stuff dry. So, if you're in a wet environment, 
you don't actually have to expose your gear to elements and to your ready because um sleep the league. oh yes i have another two things which isn't so exciting i got my charger extra charger for my phone so anyway so this is how the bag closes you see it has a flap I just just zip it along See, just like that. That's there it up. Nice and dry. Okay. That's from complimentary of our local grocery store called Stop and Shop. All right, so let's talk about the other side of the system because obviously you're going to upload videos. You're going to have to find. Now, we're talking about, first we'll talk about the kind, like I did, like today's vlog, which was, or yesterday's vlog, which was I uploaded it almost all. Phones, cameras can do, store, and then later upload using an external computer or if you're using a phone, you can usually use a phone tap. Um, my phone I usually use is my iPhone 4S. Um, it's a pretty stable workhorse. Um, with the newer iOS, unfortunately, it's getting kind of bloated um, and constipated and kind of really needs to be cleaned out a little bit and uh but it's still i still have it on the original 8.3 i never upgraded it to newer ios because i haven't really i really want to downgrade this i really want to go back to ios 6.1 6.13 or 6.14 or sorry 6.16 because this here um is a forest it has a 30 pin dot connector and um, by default, the 30 pin dot connector will work with all Macs. I found out that it's also very important to remember that the new lightning plug also can be used with all Macs. Huh, how is that? Well, it's still standard USB, but the only application, just like it does on this iOS, that works for it is the um, iPhoto. Nothing else does. Um, it'll treat the phone as a camera, and you can add and delete pictures from the phone into your computer, which you can't really um, add, go the opposite way. Is to do that, you need iTunes, and guess what? And my iTunes, my iPhone, um, Power Mac G5 is incompatible, but iOS is no more than 6.16. So, um, that kind of bites. Okay, so this... There's a variety of applications you can download off iTunes or off the Apple Store. One of the things is, um, is I use this phone for everything. This phone is my TV. This phone is my Netflix. This phone is my Hulu. <laughs> this phone is my everything. And I know that sounds perverted. Oh, yes. This is the application that we use to do live video on the Internet. Um, directly to YouTube. It's called, um, let's see if it has a name. It does. I don't know what it's called. Um, no, it's not in there. Okay. Um, so anyway, I got it registered. It's called Live Now. And it shows a picture of a little globe. And it says the word live blow the club and it uh it does work and it works very well actually it's rising for my iphone um unlike eight gram this can let me set different things like brightness and contrast and things like that i think it's brightness it does sound like it does zoom it can also change the color filters and go monochrome and all that you saw that demo with it now it's not the only phone i got i got several and they all use the same sim chip i want to talk about this guy first no, there's no battery in there right now. I took the battery out because that's one thing about the BlackBerry Bold. If you leave the battery in there and you do not properly keep it maintained, the battery will just fail. Okay? So, if you're not going to use this phone for a while, or any phone, if possible, you take the battery out. Okay? This uses a full-size SIM. This is my little sim 
Let's actually give off my actual simon that's being used in F1 4S. When I had to reduce it to smaller size from the F1 3GS. This is a little sim shim that once the sim chip is laid inside, you can slide it in here. Don't put this in before you do that, or you will find yourself crying at the blues as you break out your contacts. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> okay? So don't actually slide this into any sim holder until you've got your sim chip in there. Um, otherwise, you're going to be crying. Um, this is the Blackberry Bold is a... Um, is a good phone, but unfortunately, the 3 gs has got a couple of issues. I want to bring this up. First of all, the 3 gs um, only has a rear-facing camera. That's this one. But this has a flash. That's an additional feature. And the flash is positioned far away enough from the camera that it doesn't wash out the picture too bad. Okay? Um, it supports a standard micro USB charger that's standard for all Android phones, which is a plus because it means I don't have to worry about having a special charger. It supports the, um, the standard headphone jack, and it has a couple of special buttons. This is how to be the uh, volume and new controls on the side here for the, the phone application. It's got a, a, a function key that can be set up by the user to do certain things. Of course, there's your power standby switch on the top. Very good phone. And my service, I have a T-Mobile now, is set up to handle both this one, this one, and I have one more phone, which I didn't bring out here, which is my Android phone. Um, this So there's an Android, the BlackBerry, and the iPhone. And it works all three. Um, it's a $50 a month plan. The $50 plan is the one that has the BlackBerry data service. You need that to fully utilize this thing. If you don't have it, it's really, really limited. Um, uh, even so, it turns out the BlackBerry data service system isn't completely working. I'm going to have to get a copy of the Black by, um, BlackBerry Enterprise server and see if I can actually set up a local server here for it because it doesn't quite work. Um, it works better than it did, but it still doesn't quite work. Um, BlackBerry BBM does work on this. So, yes, I can use BBM. I just, um, because T-Mobile service provides that. All right, so now, all of these things have one thing in common. These three. Actually, the, th the third one is an Android phone from T-Mobile. My Touch. That also, or not My Touch, Alcatel. I'm oh, sorry. Um, what is it? One touch. It has all these things have one thing come. These only support a maximum of 4G. So that means that you're going to be, it's going to be slow. Um, yeah. So how do you get around pokey slow while keeping your favorite phone and using LTE? Well, first of all, um, all of these phones have Wi-Fi. Um, and that's the key piece. That brings us back to the next level of this. Which is this. Uh, I demonstrated this in the past. And I'm not going to show it to you again. This is a Samsung MiFi. It's a T-Mobile um, sub-brand. It's, it's got the T-Mobile in it back there. Um, this is one of the better MiFi's. Um, I don't know if it has all the bands. But it does work. For instance. And that's the key piece. All you do is you just turn it on. I will show real quick. Okay, let's turn it on. So you see the logo? SM-V100T. Okay, starts up. And it's going to initialize itself and authenticate to the T-Mobile LTE network. It also supports GPRS and supports Edge as well. So if for some reason it can go on. Okay, now you'll see it says here, it tells me... Um, I got a full T-Mobile signal, full battery, which I already know that. 4, 4, 4G LTE is in LTE mode right now. So what I do is all these phones are paired with it. Well, I don't think the BlackBerry is, but BlackBerry doesn't have battery in it right now. So all I do is, since it is paired, is I go to the 
app. And make sure it is paired right now. It's on my home internet. So I switch over to the T-Mobile broadband. Because it's already authenticated. It's already paired. Okay. Okay. So it's authenticated. Now it's Wi-Fi. This is important for doing a live stream video. One of the problems if you use that external microphone I showed you with any kind of iPhone like this. If you get that jabber, if it's too close to the phone. So what I do is, if I'm doing mobile hot or live, what I like to do is I turn the phone built-in transceiver off. I slide it up, and I just hit airplane mode, but then I press the Wi-Fi to turn the Wi-Fi back on. And make sure that the, this is active. And right now, I don't know how to do that. Okay, so now how fast is this thing? Well, that was one thing I didn't test this time, so I'm going to show you how. I'm going to go into the speed test net. And speed test net, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this on the screen. So I will just read you the numbers after we join the test. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to press begin test. Make sure that the Wi Fi is on. You can see a little Wi Fi signal there. And press. And it's going to go ahead. I've got. I set up 6 gigabyte data and data stash on that. So if for some reason I don't use it all. Ooh, ooh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah, that's cooking. I actually got high as 35 on this thing. Right now it's at 25.46. That's download. Okay. Now for the secret sauce, the upload. Well, it varies because depending on the time of day. Right now it just dropped down quite a bit. Oh, now it's come back up again. So when you never get results like that and you think they're inconsistent, um, because the last result was download 25.92 megabits per second and upload was 14.79 megabits per second. If you're not sure the results, just go ahead and run the test again. It's not going to kill you. It's just going to run a simple test again. And that's also a good way to do it. Get a couple averages, if you will. Because that was pretty slow. Um... The upload speed is right. Our download speed is pretty close to where I normally get it. I did get up to 32, um, which is surprising. And that's pretty close to right now, too. It just dropped those. It's just throttled back. That doesn't mean anything. We're going to share the internet connection. Um, but other devices in the building were all transmitting at 2.5 gigahertz. And so sometimes they may be getting confusion. Conflict. So before I worry about that, here's what I'm going to do. Here's a quick test. Put your MiFi right on the back of the phone. And because what that's going to do is... It's going to tell it right up front. It's going to be the strongest signal ever. Okay, right there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to test it again. Just to show you what I'm talking about. Because I mean, my apartment is a... It's a radio frequency nightmare. If you've ever been in here, it's a lot of stuff. Um, so here I have it right on the back of the thing. Okay. And it's... I think it's, I think I'm overloading the transceiver because it's always getting... The speed is just kind of fluctuating a bit. So let me bring it a little further back. Yeah, don't forget, you got binge on. on. Yes, I do. Okay. Um, so the point is, is I'm getting speeds that's much faster than my home internet. Home internet is about the same going down, um, but 16 gigabits. But upload is very different. Um, so I'm going to do one more test just to see if, you know, because you can sometimes see false positives. Holy cow, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Wow! Whoa! 36 gigabits per second. 36 megabits per second down. 37.56 megabits per second down. That's a record. Pretty well. 
<clears throat> so anyway, um, so this is the um, um, service here. And what's good about this is, I'm going to turn this off. Because I don't want to bring it my battery now. Now, maybe you're curious to know exactly how fast was that. Hmm? Well, let's take a look see how much actual data I used. Um, using a T-Mobile app. Okay. Um, now, because I have two different devices, it's going to probably show me information on the first one. Okay, so... Let's go log in. Okay. So, what I did was... Um, it's set up pretty cool right now. So everything is... Um, So how does Data Stash going to help for YouTube video production? Very simple. Okay. Remember, this only shows me on my phone. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can view, um, view other eight lines. Thank you. All right. So let me go to the hotspot here. It says, I only use two megabytes out of six gigabytes of data left. Cool. <laughs> but the only question is, is, why is that? Why is that? Why? I mean, what is, what's the rest of the phone data doing? Well, that's because the mobile hotspot data, um, two megabytes out of six gigabytes used, 30 days left, and um, day plan, simple choice, da 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 da. Data stash, identifier, okay. Support, manage us, da 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 da. Alright, so, anyway, so the cool thing is that so this thing is, now, where's that live streaming program? And if I turn off the built in phone cellular support, because you have to without iRig, because it seems to be. The diary picks up interference from everything. And I'm going to turn this off now. Um, is the... I hate turning this thing off. Okay. Um, is that you can do a lot with it. Like, because the fact is that the data... Um service is I don't know what's off. Two ways I can tell. Now, by the way, this I when I I signed up for the uh, T Mobile data service on the postpaid, I I have to admit I was a little I suffered a little bit of trepidation. Uh, and that was because if Dory, for some reason, and I don't work out as room as apartment mates, then we are going to be facing lots and lots of tears and lots of Connie Francis. Who's sorry now? Um, because we need this so that we can cover the polling place live. Um, the, there's a Republican headquarters. It's unless they move it, it's going to probably be the same place, which is right next to my house. How convenient you can you get? So why can't you use your Wi-Fi to do it? Well, besides my Wi-Fi is slow as a dodo's egg, and basically it's um, not quick enough to cover to reach over to the um, the Republican HQ. Um, the um, that's two reasons why. The other reason has to do with this. Like I said, the dairy sucks. Now, which phone do I like best and why? And what phones do I hate and why? That's hard to say. I like the BlackBerry Bold because it has a keyboard, which, frankly, I've actually gotten pretty good at typing on. But, unfortunately, when it comes to modern software features, 
It doesn't quite have it. It does not have a front-facing camera. The microphone is, you can't see it, it's a slit right here, okay, on this side. So even if I could put the thing on the tripod, and it would work, except the it would have to be up like this, you're still not going to be able to hear your talent on the other side, because the microphone is on this side instead of on this side. I suppose you could find a way to make to solve that problem, but uh, unfortunately, the iRig solution would not quite work with this um, because the video capture camera does not actually use this microphone input on this four pin jack. The only time that gets used for is if you're using a Blackberry headset. How do you like that? Uh, it supports Bluetooth. It supports NF and near field communication is the same as this thing does. They both have NFC. Um, this still lasts the longest on the batteries. Seriously. Plus, the battery is removable. So, if you leave this phone laying around in the door for a while, if the battery is physically removed, it will be quite good. This battery. Is permanently installed in the zone, so if this battery gets below a certain point, the safety feature inside the battery, the protection circuit is going to throw crowbar, and then the thing is going to be useless until you physically replace it with a new battery. Because the battery of this is removable, you can actually take the battery out. You could put multiple batteries in. This happens to be a holder for a very large capacity aftermarket battery. Otherwise, it would have the standard BlackBerry cover in the back. I might still want to get a standard Blackberry battery just for the hell of it. So make it look as it originally did when it came out of the box. Um, this has also has a removable um, SD card support. So you can actually, and I have done this already with this device. I've already used that SD card support and loaded music into the phone and stuff like that and pictures and it worked fine. This does not have an SD card support. And unfortunately, since this phone also is using the new iOS of 7, you know, or 8.3, which isn't the very latest, but it's good enough to demonstrate just how much it's screwed my Parmax G5 up, is it can't use iTunes on my Parmax G5. So I can't sync it. I can't do any uh, software updates or anything on this phone. Anymore. The only thing that works is iPhoto. The rest of it doesn't do a damn bit of good. Um, then the phone I didn't show you was El Catel One Touch. That phone is also a very nice phone. Um, it's not the most cutting edge phone. Um, it only has a gigabyte of RAM and it has, um, you know, a couple of. Um, some additional memory, but it's not it. So it's a sports SD card. I like the iPhone. Let's get a flat glass display, dual camera. It doesn't have a flash. Um, but from what I'm seeing from most phones with flash, the flash is more of a problematic issue than a helpful issue. Um, this has a flash, but a rear facing camera, but no front facing camera. This is a flash and a rear facing camera. And nothing on the front facing camera, although Apple is thinking about using your screen as a flash since it's if you're using for front facing because this is a pretty bright screen anyway. Um, the uh, all these different devices have one thing in common, and that is that they're all ways to communicate. Now, for newscasting, like I do. If you can normally record a video and then later upload it. And you can see one data. To cover the live election night, election Tuesday, November, I need to have this, my iPhone 4S, and because everybody's going to want widescreen, now I can count on it. I need this, and this has got data stash on it. So this is cool because now if I don't use all the six gigabytes of data in a single month, which is probably not going to happen, um, probably because um, I don't really plan to use this a hell of a lot. But uh, I do want to have it as sort of like a person has 
uh, a few backup technologies around in case something goes wrong. Um, but if, I mean, also, like I said, if you're doing the live streaming, you want to use your iRig Pre, you need this. Because you can put this one in your pocket. This is November. It'll probably be in the pocket of your windbreaker or whatever. And then your, um, your, your iPhone... Uh, maybe held by a camera person, and then of course you're holding the microphone. If it's a three-person or two-person video, that will be so the third person would probably be your your person you're interviewing. Um, really, very simple way to do it. It's not the most. Um, so does this BlackBerry still kick ass? Oh, that depends. What kind of things do you want to do with it? Um, it has a video player and it works fine for your YouTube videos. No problem. Okay. It has an LTV you play so I can play my music. No problem. Games? Not really. <laughs> um, business applications? Tons. This is, this is an older Blackberry using the um, older Blackberry OS 10. Or seven, actually. I think it's seven. Um, no, it is. I think it's either seven or ten. I don't know. It's not the noise. It's not the priv. It doesn't support Linux. Okay. Um, but um, I like the BlackBerry a lot. So yeah, I like these. How many problems? I only got one SIM chip, so I can change phones. Like I can change my sneakers, which isn't going to be too long before I have to do that because these sneakers are shot. Okay. In fact, if the if the if they were cars on uh, cars uh, tires, I would have been pulled over for having tires that were bald and showing steel belts, um, risk of blowout. So yeah, these sneakers are definitely toast. Now, what about the Berkeley Fund? Since I mentioned that, what exactly is it, and how does it work? The Berkeley Fund is a program here in Winston for Winston residents that allows you to get help for daily expenses or for things like emergency things like maybe you fell behind in your bills because of medical or whatever uh, and you need help and then you can go ahead and you fill out this form at the town hall and then that information uh they will along with your bills and proof of income and proof of residency and then they will Determine how much you're going to pay, and then they will go ahead and they will cut you a check. It goes, they mail it out to the appropriate companies um, for the services that they're paying for. Um, for the Berkeley Fund this month, I asked them for help with um, my upcoming phone bill, my upcoming electric bill, and my upcoming rent. Um, she, the lady at the Berkeley Fund, asked you, would you like to use the remaining of the $500 balance towards your rent bill? And I went, yeah, why not? <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be eight hundred dollars next month when Dory moves in. So I mean, you pay two hundred towards the rent. That means that I only have to pay six hundred after Dory gives me a four hundred dollar check. Now, um, so that's great news. Is then once you if you're approved, it sounds like I was. Um, you go down to the town hall ones to contact you. Call down to the town hall. You will sign the checks, the paperwork. And then they checks will be mailed to the appropriate bill companies. Um, and then that's it. And you can take advantage of it twice a year, about every six months. So um, if you really, really, really having a hard times, and please consider what I said. If you're really, 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 really having hard times, the Barclay Fund could be your tool. Um, I wouldn't use it for everyday things. After all, it's just like a fire pull box. Pull in case of fire. Don't exactly pull just because you want to get a free money to pay your bills. Okay. Uh, I was really, really desperate because Rusty the cat is going to go get a shot. So I think he's back out again. But And I had to get him a shot in and I didn't have the money otherwise. So I got the help. So now it means I can focus more of my own funds towards getting him a shot. How the hell did we get to the T-Mobile bar? Well, originally, I was just going to go ahead and buy a prepaid refill on this, okay? But when I talked to the people at T-Mobile, they said to me, Oh, Data Stash is not available for prepaid customers. 
on your MiFi. Um, you need to go with postpaid to get data stash. And I said, well, I want data stash. I need it because I'm going to be covering the Republican elections in November. I want this thing to be able to be usable because the SIM chip was going to expire in November. So um, I contacted them and, and they and they took my credit. Credit was good enough for this. And I said, sure, since you already own the equipment, you don't need to upgrade, you don't need to buy anything, you don't need to go on the installment plan or anything. Um, sure. So I get this. $35 a month for 6 gigabytes with data stash. And I got this with 2 gigabytes of data, no data stash. It does have Benjamin on now. Um, for 50 Okay, so with the, without the taxes, it's like 85 bucks. So if I had taxes, then I'll probably be close to $100. Um, that's a pretty good choice. And then I asked the lady next to me, could you... So now let's use my BlackBerry as well. Is could you set up so I can use some BlackBerry services also? Um, because I want to be able to use my BlackBerry Bold um, as well as you know, my iPhone and my Android phone. I got three phones. I like to change my SIM chip sometimes between the phones. Um, like some people change socks. And uh, she said, okay. So she got me the BlackBerry data service on top of that. Actually, it was a gentleman that did that for me because I did. I talked to him over the online chat option instead because my hearing loss. Um, it was easier that way to do that. Now, um, this is just something that Dory uses as a sleep. It's just an old dress. Um, my count. And um, what are we going to do with the other stuff? that We keep talking about the stereo amplifier project and the yin yang yin 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 all that stuff. Well, let's put it this way. Um, October, we're getting the uh, merchant's rebate. As I said, my sneakers are shot. They need new sneakers. Um, they're not cheap. The new balances are not cheap. I'm, but I will tell you what. My feet like them a lot better than the Walmart specials. Okay? They cost a lot more money, but my feet like them. So, I was going to throw these out. But guess what? I'm glad I didn't because one of my foot was acting really nasty. Uh, this one isn't so bad. It's the other one that's worse. Um, yeah, I'll show you. Then when the my see, yeah, I was getting part of here. Um, you see that my feet still like these shoes better. It's a lot more comfortable. They're going bald. They're pulling apart. But you know these things have been around for like three years, for like two years. So I've been through a lot, and um, and they really just make a difference. I've been able to get back to walking again and doing things. So it's that's a really big deal. And well also, by the way, this is gonna be the first time in, in several in maybe about a year or so we've been using coaxial cable to do this video. Um I don't know if you're gonna notice any difference in the video or not. I know I checked it on camera, I know it looks like it's better, so um just take it with a grain of salt, okay, because it is better. Um, even if it's not like major stupendously awesome better um, this is where my bag, goodie bag I, I want to show you this here's the Blackberry extended battery as I said this comes from another company um, I got a ton of SIM adapters of all kinds including a nano micro to standard and Everything else, so yeah, I'll just put my phone back or my BlackBerry back, or my BlackBerry back in here for now. Because otherwise, I have no way of keeping this in. Okay, so yeah, we are going to uh, get things done in the next few um, months. That hopefully it's gonna go good with me and Dory. Me and Dory are certainly enjoy being with each other and. Uh, it's going to be a, a kind of a challenge for both of us to always be with each other, um, you know, every day. But I think we'll do fine um, because we both respectfully understand each other's boundaries. And uh, I don't think that's going to be a big deal. Um, by the way, the apartment is, uh, has been reorganized so that we can get her a dresser for clothes. Cause she doesn't have one um 
and um, we moved the computer out here um, because of that reason. So, how is the electric bill going to be for next month? Well, you know, it's funny. I because I get paid on the first, I paid the electric bill on the first. The new bill hasn't been generated yet. So, because the new bill hasn't been generated yet, I did not have the numbers for how much it's going to be this month coming up. But when the when the uh, Parkley Fund is already kind of understands how much you're going to pay, they're going to pay you that bill. That's going to go out there. Um, and everybody's going to be happy. Everybody's going to be singing Kumbaya. <laughs> no, maybe. Oh, so we'll see. Um, but uh, I'm looking forward to a lot of new things um, in the near future. Getting some new clothes. Getting some new bras. Get carry with me again. Of course, cats are shedding. It's hot, you know. By the way, what's the weather going to be for the next few days? I didn't talk about it. I did talk about it this morning, but I didn't go into a lot of detail on it. Well, first of all, it depends on who you talk to. Because it seems to be that the weather is always constantly in flux. If you go by the app, which comes from the iPhone, and both that and the Weather Channel app are calibrated to my area, I'm going to read both of the forecasts. And then the way you can understand what I'm talking about, okay? Um, what about July 4th for Connecticut? Let's say it is going to be uh, a dry day. It's not going to be raining. Well, at least that was what it was this morning. Right now outside at uh, 2 o'clock in the morning, it is 12 degrees Celsius. It's partly cloudy. And let's see. Let's get to the extended forecast. Okay, here we go. Saturday, it's tonight is supposed to get down to 11. Sunday, it'll be a high at 27 degrees. Monday, uh, great for barbecues and everything like that. It will not be raining that day at all. A high of 30 degrees, a little over 15. I kind of missed that myself. Um, Tuesday will be a 60% chance of rain. High of 29, a low of 17. Wednesday will be a high of 31, a low of 18. Um, partly sunny, no rain. And I don't see any temperatures that really, really, really look out of the ordinary on this app. It just happens to be it's going to be in the 29 and 30s or so week. Now we go to the one that's built into the phone, and it's set for the same town, and Winstead, and it says it's it's um, wow, that's really wrong. Wow, yeah. Hey Sunday, okay, let's come on here. Monday it says twenty-five. Tuesday it says twenty-six. Wednesday it says. But the funny thing that's interesting is why is it saying it's 24 degrees at night? It's not. It will be up to 24 later today. So it sounds like their local thermometer is broken, but um, 24, 24, 24, 24, 24, 24, New York. Same thing. So something going on with the online app. Um, but uh, it's nothing too bad. It's just a bunch of numbers for me anyway. So, name all the applications where we're going to use this on this live streaming for. Well, as you know, the soup kitchen usually has a Thanksgiving dinner, usually a week before Thanksgiving. So, and I keep saying to myself, is I want to cover it live. Uh, the problem is, is because the soup kitchen wants to maintain confidentiality, uh, we I have no idea if I can actually get to cover it live, um, because it may actually cause some people some uncomfort, and uh, I don't want to cause people to be just uncomfortable. I just want to try to do my best and and cover the news and the sports and the world around me in a timely manner, and um, and I want to do that. I like I like being covering things talking about the news and talking to people and of course with the app we're also going to be covering uh, snowstorms 
um, in more realistic in life time. I haven't figured out how we're going to do our Ask Us Anything yet. If we're going to do another Ask Us Anything live. Because the last time I didn't Ask Us Anything live, the only thing came out of it was a lot of people kind of shaking their heads and going, is, gee, you know, um, that's kind of boring. Dory and I over the Yellow House didn't Ask Us Anything. Google hang us on air. And all we ended up doing was basically shaking our head and going, is, this is the pits. Um, how come we can't get people to ask questions? How Well, it turned out that part of the problem was that some people were asking questions. <laughs> it's just that, that we weren't sure how to answer the questions or weren't sure what how we were supposed to um, acknowledge the questions. It was really just cha- chaotic. Um, so if we do another Ask Us Anything Live, um, it's going to be a real exercise because there's not going to be any easy way to make sure we can get to your questions in a timely manner. We'll try, but, you know. So, yeah, sometimes doing this ask us anything, it's better to have you send us your questions and then we answer them um, on the air. You know, not necessarily live, but like we do with these videos, record them and then play them for you. And that's still an option, too. Um... And you can still always send us your questions, even if we do an Ask Us Anything Live. If we got a stack of questions that came in, and we're doing that live, it just means that we'll pull your questions out of the bag of questions and answer them on the air, as we did the very first Ask Us Anything. And that's what we'll do. And by the way, the um, the most important thing is not so much a stupid question. It's the question that was never asked. That you still want to know the answer to. So if you've got questions, it would certainly would be great for you to bring them up. And, and we'll do our best to answer them in a timely manner. Uh, please understand that depending on the question content, or, you know, it may not be something we can answer right away. Okay? Uh, if it's a question that requires us some time to think the answer through, um, especially if you mail us the questions in advance, we can at least look at the question me, Lomi, and Dory can look at the question, and then, then, once we have, the, we can give you an answer in a more or less in the live program. So, um, that's something to think about. And, um, I hope tonight's little, uh, technical vlog, um, if you want to call it that, because after all, um, the use of the mobile technology that I use has made it so much easier for me to do videos anywhere I damn want. It's like being a 300 pound gorilla. I can do videos anywhere I damn want. And as long as there's no posted sign saying no videos, I can do videos almost anywhere on the street corner, um, in a car, on a bus. As long as it doesn't offend everybody else. At the soup kitchen? Uh, library? Mm, probably not. At the um, grocery store? Sure, why not? Although most grocery stores have you know, building roofs in my area, so they're like giant Faraday cages and there's no cell phone signal that goes through. That would be one of those videos that I would record and then send up on the air live. Um... So there's a whole bunch of new technologies out there. And as you can see, my hair is going to be done again because it's growing out. And it does grow out um, quite quickly. Um, what about what the $700, Michelle? Are you planning to buy any new clothes? You know, that's a great question because, yeah, um, that is a very good question. Should I buy clothes? Instead of buying an amplifier, I'm thinking more and more answers. Yes, I do think that would be a more prudent and wise choice. So, yeah, I might very well do that. Um, we'll see. You know, that's just how it is. Um, but for now, because I'm going to edit this down and put the the leaders and the trailers on and all that stuff and clean the shots so if there's any inconsistencies and stuff like that I'm going to get ready to wrap it up but I thank you very much for watching this and I hope that you will um, constantly um, come back and watch more of our channel and if you, if you have not already subscribed please do we're going to try to cover new stuff 
um, every every day, every week. We're going to try to cover new stuff, okay? But that's going to depend also on a few things I can use your help on. Even when Dory moves in, even if Dory's paying me some money towards the rent, even if all that stuff is, you guys are still really technically or my boss in the sense that if you really think about it the money that you donate to me we can use to buy stuff to video demos to new audio video gear to whatever and that is up to you to understand this this is pretty much just like pbs um except that i i actually i kind of do a lot of pledge breaks <laughs> Sorry, I do, okay? But at least there's more lists at the end of the video. Everybody who contributes something towards this channel, I appreciate very much your time, your dedication. It just shows me that you that you really, truly believe in the material that I'm, or Lumi, or Dory present to you. And Dory will be doing more videos on her own channel. She hasn't done anything really recently. Um... But remember, Dory isn't very skilled yet, so give her some time. It's not something that she's going to be able to master in 24 hours period. Please remember, I started out on television. My first TV broadcast was on UConn Student Television, UCTV. Okay, when I was in stores, interviewing about talking about adaptive equipment for the blind. So that is how I got started. But even before then, I was working in, in um, as a DJ in home radio and uh, running a bootleg little AM radio station, which I still kind of miss running. I could still buy a high-powered AM transmitter today for about $700 in Greece. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I want to go through and go through the proper channels and get a legitimate license and turn their AM radio station dream into a reality. Uh, that's going to take a while. It's not going to happen overnight. But for now, I thank you all for watching these videos. And hopefully the day will come when you and I and everyone else will come up with some whole new content, whole new ideas, and we can all learn and grow together. So for now, talk to you soon. Bye-bye, everybody.